యా గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ సో వెల్కమ్ టు మైక్రోవేవ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ వీడియో లెక్చర్ సిరీస్ సో ఇన్ టుడేస్ వీడియో వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ గైరేటర్ ఎ టూ పోర్ట్ గైరేటర్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ఇన్ టుడేస్ క్లాస్ సో గైరేటర్ ఈజ్ ఎ టూ పోర్ట్ డివైస్ సో విచ్ హ్యాస్ ఎ రిలేటివ్ ఫేస్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ వన్ ఎయిటీ డిగ్రీస్ ఫర్ ట్రాన్స్మిషన్ ఫ్రమ్ పోర్ట్ వన్ టు పోర్ట్ టూ సో దిస్ ఈస్ ద a two port gyrator this is port number 1 this is port number 2 so when you are having transmission from port 1 to port 2 this gyrator is having a property of offering a phase difference of 180 degrees and no phase shift for transmission from port 2 to port 1 that means when you are moving from port 1 to port 2 so this two port device that is gyrator is going to offer 180 degrees phase difference or phase shift and when you are moving from port 2 to port 1 this particular two port device is having zero phase shift or no phase shift that is uh, very very important so in a gyrator a thin circular ferrate rod tapered at both the ends is located inside the circular wave guides supported by a permanent magnet so uh, this is how it looks the geometry or internal structure of the uh, gyrator a two port gyrator this is uh, port number 1 this is port number 2 so this one is a rectangular wave guide which is twisted here with certain angle this is 90 degrees twist and then we are having a, a circular wave guide and at the end you are going to have the output so here inside this particular circular wave guide we are going to place a ferrite rod so in this case so this particular component is nothing but our ferrite rod and across this particular ferrite rod so here and here so we are going to put a permanent magnet this is a permanent magnet you can see the configuration of arrangement here so this is our north pole this is our south pole these are permanent magnets and we are keeping ferrite between these two permanent magnets that means this particular setup we are going to put here like this so here north pole here south pole and we are going to offer uh, a permanent uh, magnetic field for your ferrite that is how uh, it is going to uh, have the uh, configuration so we can understand uh, in detail uh, from this particular figure so where so we have here port number 1 this is our port number 2 so we have rectangular wave guide and we have a twist here twisted rectangle is converted into the uh, circular wave guide this is our circular wave guide circular wave guide and at the output port again we are going to have a, a rectangular uh, output so in case of wave guides so in case of uh, especially uh, rectangular wave guide te10 is the uh, dominant mode and for circular wave guide te11 is the dominant mode so we are representing the uh, wave guide properties uh, in this particular figure and this twist is going to offer uh, 90 degrees twist that means any wave crossing this particular twist is going to be uh, having 90 degrees uh, phase shift and then here this is the ferrite rod and the arrow mark is given here here anti clockwise so uh, what whatever the wave is passing through this rod it is going to have a a theta in anti clockwise direction which we have discussed in the uh, previous video so uh, this is the uh, same uh, permanent uh, magnet arrangement setup so where you are going to put across here okay so in some textbooks you will find uh, magnets something like this you will find these are the uh, north pole and south pole you are going to offer a permanent magnetic field to the ferret so uh, if you uh, go ahead with understanding uh, by giving a input at port number 1 that means when a wave enters at port number 1 its plane of polarization rotates by 90 degrees because of twist in the wave guide so this twist is basically not due to ferrite rod that means suppose if i am giving input here so let's assume so this is our input then after passing before passing uh, this twist it is having uh, this property plane of polarization and after passing this twist 
you can see here it is having a 90 degrees rotation 90 degrees rotation in anti clockwise that is due to the uh, twist of the wave guide and after that uh, this wave is going to pass through the ferrite rod to this ferrite rod and already it has been uh, rotated to uh, 90 in anti clockwise and due to this ferrite, uh, ferrite rod uh, it is going to offer again uh, 90 degrees more in the anti clockwise only in the last class we have seen when you are moving from left to right or right to left so your ferrite rod is going to offer you anti clockwise rotation only so here so already we are having 90 degrees in anti clockwise because of this ferrite rod we are going to have one more 90 so 90 plus 90 is 180 so the wave polarized will be direction will be like this so at the output port we are going to have a wave having 1 degree spatial that means we are giving input this one and we are getting output so this uh, we are uh, getting when you are giving input at port 1 and measuring output at port number 2 clear so now what we will do is we will assume input is given at port number 2 and what will be the output at port number 1 so for understanding that so what we will do is so we will provide a input wave a plane polarized wave at the port number 2 and so before entering the uh, ferrite rod it is going to uh, have the same moment but after entering this ferrite rod it is going to make a 90 degrees in the anti clockwise so this is a 90 degrees theta rotation so in anti clockwise and this particular wave has to pass this is a twisted wave guide that means from circular to rectangle so in pre in the first case it is moving from port 1 to port 2 that's why the conversion is rectangle to circle wave guide but now we are we are moving like this that means circular wave guide to rectangular wave guide and this twist wave guide is offering a 90 degrees uh, twist so this 90 already 90 is there so again it is going to offer 90 in the clockwise so this 90 becomes this zero that means we are going to have this wave and the same we are going to get as a output so in case of the second case that is giving input at port number two and receiving output at port one so there is no phase shift that is what we can observe from this particular figure so in case of a two port gyrator when you are moving from first port to second port it is going to offer 180 degrees phase shift when you are moving from second port to first port it is going to offer zero that we can understand uh, by understanding the comparison between uh, two things so because in this particular picture so we have got rotations because of the two important elements one is due to the ferrite rod and second one is due to the uh, twisted waveguide so now we will try to understand uh, the differences and similarities between ferrite and a twisted waveguide once uh, we are able to understand the difference and similarities it will be very easy for us uh, for the upcoming uh, classes so here ferrite rod ferrite material is a non reciprocal and twisted waveguide is a reciprocal that is first difference in case of ferrites moving from left to right that is plane rotated by theta in anti clockwise direction moving from right to left again plane rotated by theta in anti clockwise that means if you are assuming this as your ferrite then if you are moving from left to right then theta will be in counter clockwise or anti clockwise if you are moving from right to left again theta will be in anti clockwise that is in case of ferrets now we will try to understand uh, what is going to happen uh, in case of twisted wave guides so when we are moving from left to right plane rotated by theta in anti clockwise that means when you are moving this is a uh, let's assume this is a twisted wave guide this is, this is a rectangle wave guide and after this you are going to have a circular wave guide okay so because of this twist so it is named as a twisted wave guide so in case of this when you are moving from left to right left to right means from rectangular to circular wave guide 
So what is the theta rotation? Theta will be in anti-clockwise. And second case is when you are moving from right to left, the plane rotated by theta in clockwise. That is what so we have observed in this particular figure, especially for the second case. When we are giving input at port number 2, when we are observing in output at port number 1, after ferrate rod rotation, that is anti-clockwise 90, then this is undergoing through the twisted waveguide, where when you are moving from right to left, according to this, the plane is going to rotate with theta in the clockwise. So here theta is how much? So this is 90. So already anti-clockwise 90 is there. So if you are if you are moving towards clockwise, if you are moving towards clockwise with 90, then you are going to have the a zero phase shift with respect to input output. That is the most important thing one has to understand when you are dealing with a twisted waveguide, when you are moving from left to right, so direction of theta will be in anti-clockwise. When you are moving from right to left, direction of theta will be from uh, clockwise. This is very, very important. Okay. So next important uh, parameter is finding the scattering matrix for gyrator. So here uh, we are having two ports. So the matrix size will be 2 by 2 uh, square matrix. So we can write matrix S is equal to S11, S12, S21, S22 and both the ports are perfectly matched. Perfectly matched means in case of E plane, H plane, port number 3, uh, E arm and H arm uh, respectively are perfectly matched. So we have written S33 is equal to 0 in both the cases. So in the similar fashion, in case of the two port gyrator, uh, both the ports are perfectly matched. So we can write S11 is equal to S22 is equal to 0. That is the one important property. And also we have observed when we are moving from port 1 to port 2, so we are having a phase shift of 180 degrees that we can represent as S12 is equal to minus S21. Basically, we have seen Sij means what? I is your output. So J is our input. So based on that concept, we can write S12. S12 means output at port 1, input at port number 2. S21 means output at port 2, input at port number 1. So this you are going to get a minus sign. That is 180 degrees phase shift. So we can put these conditions in our S matrix, then we are going to get matrix S is equal to 0, 0 diagonally and S12, this is minus S12. So in order to find out the value of the S12, so what we have to do is, we have to use the property of unity of the S, par S parameters. That is property of unity is S into matrix S into matrix S complex conjugate is equal to I. So here S is 0, S12 minus S12, 0. So we will put the same thing here and it's complex conjugate. So S1 to star minus S1 to star is equal to on right hand side we have 1, 0, 0, 1. So here, so these are first row, second row, first column, second column. So if you take first row, first column, then we are going to have 0 into 0, that is 0, S12 into minus S1 to star, S12 into minus S1 to star is equal to 1. So we can write this as mod S12 whole square is equal to 1. S12 is equal to 1. So if you put S12 is equal to 1, then S21 is all nothing but minus S12. So we can put these values, then we are going to get the final S matrix that is S is equal to 0, 1, minus 1 and 0. So once S matrix is known, we can find out the conditions for output signals for various different inputs. So B1, B2 are our outputs. These are S matrix and these are our inputs. So then we are going to get B1 is equal to A2, B2 is equal to minus A1. So by using this particular expression, we are going to see for various types of inputs, how you are, what you are going to get as an output. So let's assume if A1 is not equal to 0, A2 is equal to 0. A1 is not equal to 0 means you are applying input at port 1 and you are not applying anything to port number 2. That is the meaning of A1 not equal to 0, A2 is equal to 0. So in this condition, we are getting B2 is equal to minus A, B1 is equal to 0. That means, suppose if I am having this as a uh, gyrator, this is my port 1, this is my port 2. So according to first case, what we are doing? We are giving input at first port. We are not giving any input at second port. That means we are going to measure output 
across port number 2. That is what the condition we are assuming as a first case. In this case, what is output you are getting? B2 is equal to minus A1. That means you are going to get output across 2. That is suffix 2 means output port B2, which is a 180 degrees phase shift of your input that is B2 is equal to minus A1. This minus means 180 degree phase shift with respect to the input. That is first case. Next case number 2 is what? If A1 is equal to 0 and A2 is not equal to 0. That means input port there won't be any input given at port 1. A2 is not equal to 0 means you are going to apply input to port number 2. So if you apply this condition we are going to have B1 is equal to A2, B2 is equal to 0. So since we are applying input across port number 2, we are going to get output across port number 1. So that output is B1 is equal to A2, that means 0 degree phase shift. So that is what uh, we have seen uh, in the uh, first point. When you are moving from first port to second port, 180 degrees phase shift. When you are moving from second port to first port, 0 degrees phase shift. So this is all about a two port gyrator microwave component uh, uh, discussion about S matrix and the uh, uh, comparison between ferrite and the twisted wave gates and the working principle of the uh, gyrator, two port gyrator. Uh, thank you. Uh, have a nice day.